Welcome to Garden Sanity. I'm Laura and today I'm going to be cleaning out this bed behind me. Now I did half of it yesterday and I wanted to save the other part so I could show you today what it's like cleaning leaves out of bark chips. It's a different type of mulch. It's not your shredded type of wood chips. This is a thicker type of bark that breaks down a lot slower. It's very attractive. It's a pain to clean leaves out of but I love the look and so I'm going to talk it through with you as I do it. Then I'm going to put some tree protectors around my Rosa Sharon and the bottom of the Redbud stick, uh, which will make sense when you see it. And then after it's all cleaned up, I want to show you some things that are actually blooming. It's early December and I actually have blooms here. I'm in Zone 7, Southern New Jersey. We've already had some heavy, hard freezes. Somehow some things are still <laughs> blooming. It's pretty neat. So let's get started. And first I'm gonna start with cleaning up the bed. So let me show you what that looks like so far. So here is the part of the bed that I need to do. Let's give you a close up look. Lots of leaves, right? You can barely see the bark mulch. <laughs> there you see a few, but you can barely see them. Now let me show you Oh yeah, there's the prerequisite leaves that are in shrubs. I'm sure you go through the same thing, right? Right. Okay, then we curve around here. And this is starting where I had cleaned up yesterday. By the way, this is the Beyond Pink Bluebeard and even dried, it's beautiful. If this grows in your zone as a perennial, I would say get it. I'll put on the screen what the zones are because I can't think of them offhand. But it's absolutely beautiful. Now, it kind of froze because we've had some freezing weather. But if you look way down in it, it had some new growth recently. So what I'm going to do, this is I just planted this, um, I think it was in August. So it already bloomed the first season, which was amazing. After sitting in a pot all summer, I was amazed that it did as well as it did. And I'm not going to cut it down for the fall. So I'm going to just leave it. I like the winter interest already, and we'll see how it does. Those are three GMs in front of it. But here you can see, I got a lot of the leaves out. There might be one or two here or there. And I'll just pick up one of these so you see what they look like. It's tree bark mulch. Bark chips is what the, I think the bags often say. And you can see it's a lot thicker. It'll take a lot longer to break down. However, it is all organic. There's no dye or anything in this. And so it will break down over time and provide nutrients to the soil. It's just not as finely chopped up and won't break down as quickly as your wood chip type of mulch. So that's what this looks like when it's uncovered by leaves. Then you can see I cleaned around the base of the limelight hydrangea tree which still has a lot of its dried flowers, which is gorgeous for winter interest. And you have the hellebores that I uncovered from all the leaves, and they are a beautiful evergreen right now. And then of course you have the little quick fire hydrangeas, and then you have the dwarf burning bush with a few red leaves still on it, looking pretty. So I need to do the rest of the bed and get those leaves up. So I'm going to tell you a few little tricks I do, kind of talk you through this a little bit. All right, so one of my first tricks that I do, and <laughs> some of these may seem silly to you, but these are little games I play with myself. And I've actually done this since I was a kid, um, picking leaves and helping my parents clean up the gardens. That's been a job since I was a kid. So, you know, I kind of developed little games over time. And when I became an adult, I realized there's still value in those. So I'm going to tell you about some tricks I do for cleaning up the beds when you don't have a lot of time or you're feeling overwhelmed and you come out and like we did over the weekend. By the way, we put, I think it was six bags of chopped up leaves. Uh, we sucked them up and mulched them up. So they were all chopped up. I think six bags of those. So leaves condensed. That's what we did this weekend. <laughs> we did that on Saturday and then it rained on Sunday and now, you know, we have the leaves as you can see. We have tons of oak leaves behind us. We'll be doing this seriously every year it goes into January. So I digress. However, if you're in a situation where you're feeling overwhelmed because my gosh, the leaves just don't stop, 
One of the quickest ways that you can make your garden beds look good is to just take the leaves out of the shrubs. I know that might sound silly, but when you look at this, it's like, oh my goodness, there's all these leaves. And just before you even clean anything, you just take all the leaves out. You know, you don't, now this is a boxwood, so I can be rather rough with it. You know, I'm not, uh, it's not a delicate shrub, but you take all the leaves out and it's just gonna instantly look nicer. You know, it's just, I do this on my euonymus, I do it in the boxwoods, the junipers, you know, whatever I have. Okay, a couple more. I'm throwing these down because you know what? Always have to pick up more. So that's gonna make it, let me get out of the, not make a shadow. That's just gonna make your bed instantly nicer. Um, you can reach up if you still have leaves in some of your ornamental trees, in your smaller perennials, just take those out. And that is step one. If let's say all you have is about 10 minutes, go out and do that. You'll find that you'll feel a lot better already of how things look. So that would be, I only have 10 minutes. Is it really worth it to get outside? Yes, it's worth it to get outside. Get your heart rate going a little bit, get some outdoor air and just clean up the shrubs and perennials. That's step one. You don't even need a bucket or anything to clean. That's it. So the second step, what I would do, uh, let me move the tripod so I can show you that. All right, so the second thing that you can do after you've cleaned off your shrubs and perennials is clean up the edging of the bed. You see all this? This can just easily be picked up. Now, I'm not saying that you have to do every single leaf by hand because that would be insane. But if you just have a small garden bed or a small patio area that you know, you're thinking, ah, oh, it's really not a big deal. You'll be amazed at just how nice and neat it looks. Now, mind you, I'm not one of these anti-fall leaf people. I'm sure you know the ones I'm talking about. I hope you're not one of those because fall is fall, you know, and leaves are beautiful and leaves provide cover for bees that are, you know, going to hibernate. Um, it provides some nesting for insects, for some songbirds. So I'm not anti-leaf, get rid of every single leaf, but I'm just showing you how to neaten it up and not go crazy, but does that make sense? I hope it does. So anyway, this is just an old bucket. This is a permasand bucket. So now I'm not putting permasand down. <laughs> I'm just using it for leaves. Now, like I said, you don't have to do every single thing by hand. If you want, you can actually use a blower or you can use this rake and not this rake, but a rake. You know, if you get a nice lightweight rake, it can just get them out of the way for you pretty easily. And it's just a quick way to neaten up the bed. So this rake, let me come around so I can put it in front of you. So this is just a plastic rake. Still as the, couldn't ever get all the adhesive off from the label, but it's plastic, you know, nothing fancy. It's got a long pole and, you know, a nice little gripper at the end. So this is, I use this because I like it because it's very lightweight. Um, now, in some cases, you might prefer to use a metal rake. My husband actually prefers the metal rake when he's raking up any kind of leaves in the gravel, just to make it look nice and neat. It's easier for him and quicker for him, whereas I prefer this guy, <laughs> the plastic rake. So anyway, that would be step two for me. Long way of saying, clean up the edging. It'll look a lot nicer already. Okay, now the third step is going to be not just getting the leaves out of the bed, but again, if you're shorter on time or it's a little overwhelming, you could do what I did. I just started at one end yesterday and I decided I'm gonna go as far as I feel like going. It ended up being about half the bed, a little more than half. And then now I did it on purpose. I wanted to stop so I could talk you through this today. But if I wanted to stop, I could have just stopped anyway for the night because I had done quite a bit. It was also getting dark kind of early. so. Instead of just diving into the bed, another way you can do it, again, to quickly make it look like, well, not quickly, but you know what I mean, make it look like it's a little bit neater, is to just get the leaves around the edge. You know, if you start picking out these leaves of just around the edging, it's instantly gonna look nice and neat. It's gonna look more natural because a lot of times 
when leaves fall off trees, like let's say the tree in this bed, it's going to the leaves are predominantly going to stay around the tree. So when you start moving visually the leaves to the center because you've cleaned up around all the edges, it looks a lot neater and it kind of fools the eye into thinking that the bed looks nice and neat. So a little trick I've learned over the way, uh, nobody taught it to me, I just did it and I liked the way it looked. So sometimes it makes it look like you cleaned up when you still got some work to do. So the one thing that can be a little bit frustrating, let me move this bucket over here, that can be a little bit frustrating about getting leaves out of bark chips is that you kind of have to start just gently first grabbing the uppermost layer and knowing that you might still end up getting a bark chip and then just throw it down. So it's, it's a little bit, let me put it this way, when I did this for the first time last year, because we had put the mulch down in the fall, this bark mulch, bark chip mulch, so last fall, I was really used to just doing regular mulch. A lot easier to just even use a rake, even use a blower on a low cycle. You can't do that with this. It's just unfortunate that all of the leaves, you know, don't really, they stick inside the mulch. You know, you can see this bark chip I lifted up. You know, there's some leaves underneath it. Now, I'm not going to be nuts and go through every single bark chip just to lift up leaves but you do have to move some things around so as I was saying last year when I did this I was not a happy camper I was actually kind of angry I was frustrated I wished I would have known that sooner it was a pain in the butt to do and then I realized you know what it's worth it because then it looks really pretty and I realized take my time you know, I think last year what happened was I didn't realize that this was a project that was going to take so long. So naturally, when you're not anticipating that, you get a little bit upset. Well, yesterday, I was out here for probably about two hours. I can't even tell you what I thought about. I just got lost in it. It was nice out, well, in the 50s. There was not any blowers or mowers going on. So it was nice and quiet. And I realized when I was done with the, you know, I did everything I wanted to do for the day. I realized I felt really great. I felt like I had absolutely gotten some fresh air, gotten some gentle exercise. And I didn't think about anything. I got lost in just this act of, it's almost like when you get lost in weeding like when it's a perfect day out and there's not bugs and it's not 90 million degrees out and you just kind of lose yourself. It's almost therapeutic. That's how this was for me. So now I realize that as long as I know ahead of time, and I, I would say this to you, if you're considering using bark chips, as long as you know ahead of time, it's going to be somewhat of a pain in the butt to get all of this out and you take your time and break it down in sections and do what I do. Like I said, you know, get one area and then move on to the next. So this is all clean now. I'm gonna slide to the next area. And you take your time, you'll be good. So a few other things I wanted to say about doing this is I'm not anal about getting every leaf and I hope you don't think that I am. I mentioned that before, but it's worth saying again. And the second thing is, is it's not a bad idea to leave a few leaves like I mentioned before. So. I'm going to be doing this several more times, so the bed's going to look nice and neat today, and then it's not going to look so hot, <laughs> probably by the, well, actually, probably by the day after tomorrow, because tomorrow we're supposed to get gale force winds and rain. It's not going to be pretty. So I imagine a ton more leaves are going to come down, and in a little bit I'll show you what those oak leaves that are all on the trees behind the fence still look like, because there's a lot of them. But we do have some pretty foliage from it, so I'll take it. But yeah, um, why I don't leave leaves on the bed, personally, a lot of people do, or you can do chopped up ones, and I probably will put some of those on the bed, maybe more towards the winter time, but I don't do a lot anymore because one year we had problems with some moles and mice and voles and... I don't even know what the critters were, but what happened is in the springtime, 
I uncovered all of the leaves. And this was, I'm going back maybe six, seven years ago. And there were all little tunnels underneath, like just not underneath the ground, but they had made tunnels through the leaves. And, you know, I think I basically just provided them with a somewhat warm apartment complex for the winter time. So I can't do that anymore. All right, so I wanted you to see what the edge looks like now, which is nice. <laughs> you can see the bark chips nicely. And yeah, there's still leaves in the center. But the edge of the bed, the inner edge, well, also the outer edge, because I got those leaves out of the way, but it looks nice and neat. And so this is a trick I did as a kid. And <laughs> I guess it's a little game I played as a child. And sometimes, you know, my parents would look out and say, wow, what a great job you did on the leaves. And I just might have left some of the ones in the middle. <laughs> but I eventually got them, of course. They'd catch on. But anyway, a little game I played as a child, I am now doing at age 56, and it still works. So, got nice bark mulch here and more leaves in the middle that I'm going to pick up now. So I wanted you to just see that and try it out for yourself. If you're feeling overwhelmed, just do the edges first. And then when you're looking out from the window, you know, kitchen window or something, and you say, wow, look at this. I did a good job. And then, you know, get the rest later. So another little tip I'll give you while I'm cleaning up these leaves is that when you're cleaning up leaves, don't do anything else not the time to weed it's not the time to cut back perennials it's not the time to prune or anything else you feel like doing because that just prolongs this chore so I find it's best to stay focused on what you're trying to do and get it done because I think for all of us when we first come out and we start doing our chores we're really energetic <laughs> you know we're like hey this is great it's gorgeous out there's no bugs it's beautiful weather and then you know after a little while you're kind of like eh, I kind of want this project to be done so pick a different day to come out and do weeds and I say that because I'm seeing some weeds and I'm just gonna leave them for another day also conscious of the fact that we're getting rain tomorrow, so I'd really like to just pick these leaves up first. Now, these are the hellebores, the shooting star hellebores that I just planted as well. Uh, towards the end of the summer, I think it was August, I planted these. And again, they were in pots for probably way too long because I snatched them up in the springtime and then I wasn't sure where to put them. But look at their evergreen. So look at what pretty evergreen color they provide. And that's what they basically do all summer. And then, boy, oh boy, are they going to put on a show in the winter into spring. It's going to be beautiful. I'll link to a video in the description area of a video I did last spring of my candy love hellebores and how pretty they looked. So I added these this year and I'm looking forward to a gorgeous show. And you have to stay tuned because <laughs> some of these hellebores are already putting out some flower buds and they are so pretty. I, they're early because we've had some freezes. I don't know what time of year they think it is, but I'm not worried because they are long blooming and very, very hardy. They are a great, great flower to have in your garden and they're perennial but my favorite kind of perennial, which is evergreen perennial. My other favorite kind of perennial are sterile perennials. And I, I know I've talked with some gardeners in the comments about some of the perennials that they grow that are sterile as well. And I've got a couple good ideas that I'm definitely gonna try out this coming year. All right, let me finish this up. So now the bed's all done. 
And before I put these tree protectors around the Rose of Sharon, I wanted to show you that I've got blooms. <laughs> Look at the dianthus. Now dianthus is an evergreen as well. And this is a perennial dianthus. I'll put the name on the screen because I can't quite remember it offhand. This is an annual dianthus that I planted years ago but keeps kind of coming back. And it just recently bloomed. You see this? And this is a bloom perhaps about to open. Or it froze. I'm not sure which. But look at that. I've got some pretty pink flowers here. Not a lot. Yes, you do see catmint. I didn't have the heart to pull these out. I will probably in the spring, but I'm going to leave them for now. And uh, you can see my video on catmint. It, it's look at these. These are not doing great at all. Look at this little guy. You know, this is their. Uh, they completed their second full season. And that one over there is doing the best. But the rest of these, nah, I don't like them. So I will pull them out. I just didn't do it for the fall. I'll definitely do it in the spring. I'll probably let them bloom, see what they do. And then they're going bye-bye. Now nearby the dianthus. So that's the cat mint that is doing the best. But what I wanted to show you was this beautiful bloom. It's a bud. It's a flower bud. And these are the shooting star hellebores I was talking about. So I see one flower bud there. And then there's a white one, whitish pink, right down there. So those are the only two I see so far. And these hellebores are on either side of this winter heath. Now, I don't know if this is Kramer's Red or not. I'm not 100% certain that it is. I planted this so long ago that I don't think that it is. But what happened was a couple years back, I had a huge, in fact, where these hellebores are now, I had a huge, giant, I think there were three of them, Heath's back here. Two of them were Kramer's Red. I don't know what this third one was. However, what I ended up doing was I cut them all down. But this guy was stubborn. And he had a few little green things on him, so I thought, you know what, I'll leave him. And now look, he's already starting to bloom for the winter. And this is what we loved when we had all three shrubs, is we would look out our kitchen window and we would have these beautiful, beautiful pinkish purple magenta flowers all winter long. So I'm going to have that again, which is nice. So I thought that then when the hellebores start blooming, that's going to look like a really nice display. So I've got some flowers, which is really cool. So over there where that lantern is, that's where those hellebores, the shooting stars that I just showed you are. And then I'm going to kind of curve around here to show you. Oh, I've got a limelight hydrangea tree flower in my head. <laughs> These are the candy love hellebores and I don't see any buds on these now just yet but you can see how they look they're very pretty very evergreen and oh they have the most beautiful beautiful blooms and this is the red bud stick which had a lot of nice leaves on it and you see where I cut it off and it's got some larger sticks growing up which is great so I'll put another tree protector on that and then I wanted to show you just the beautiful dried flowers of the little quick fire I've got four of them and they're just so delicate and so pretty they bleach out in the Sun and they'll bleach out more as the winter continues but just look how beautiful they are that is just really nice and when you look at it against some evergreen, you can see it even better. It's so pretty. And here's a the tall branch, tall stem. I remember pointing this out in the, I think it was early summer. But this gives you, you can see kind of in the sun, the pretty fall color it takes on. Just really beautiful. 
And then these are the other two. A little hard to see against the mulch. But here's some more of that very pretty color. It was a little more vibrant earlier in the fall. And the beautiful dried flowers. Just love these. So pretty. And here's a shot of the whole bed so you can see it. And the limelight hydrangea tree with all its flowers dried now. It's so beautiful. Look at that against the blue sky. Really pretty. I'm going to do another video. I'm not going to do it today, but I want to talk to you about how it's beneficial to actually start looking at all the growth on the tree. Just get a sense of where you pruned and what happened since you pruned. It's kind of a learning thing, but it's, it's, a, it's a good thing to know. And we have some really cool foliage colors still yet. See that red? I am not sure what kind of plant and or tree that is because it just started growing that tall over this past season and it had some really interesting flowers on it. I took pictures of it, so I got to look that up and figure that out. It's something native. I love it. And then you got a little bit more yellow and orange color, but all these leaves still need to come down. And then you got some orange over there, probably a little hard to see with the sun. And then the emerald green arborvitaes. And now I'm just going to be putting the tree protectors around the Rosa Sharon. Now I'm just going to do one layer right now and the reason I'm not doing two layers right now is because I know I'm still going to have a ton of leaves to clean up. So at least I'll connect all these together. Now I haven't seen any rabbits back here all summer which to me is scary <laughs> because you know me I always say they're plotting and they are going to come back. I know this. Now it's right on the outside of this Rosa Sharon are two small Rosa Sharon plants, one right here and one right here. So I'm just going to let them grow and see what they're doing and if they continue to grow. Now mind you, they said that this lavender chiffon was a seedless version, but I've gotten some plants from it and that's okay. Uh, if these two grow, then I will plant them elsewhere. So I'm very excited about that. Love free plants, right? All right, and now I'm going to put one more layer for the winter time on the redbud stick because rabbits, even though I haven't seen any, get that leaf out of there. Even though I haven't seen any, I just don't want to take any chances. They do like redbuds, so I do too. I guess I should be glad that they have good taste, but uh, <laughs> now let's see. This way is what I got to do. I haven't done this since last year. So let me get this in here and this one right there. I could probably do, now that's good because I want it to kind of not, yeah, that's good. There we go. So I made it a little bit bigger than the one underneath it. So now I pushed it down a little bit. It's not actually touching any of the stem or branches so that's good that's what I want and I can see there's little buds on the stick so I continue to be happy that this tree will hopefully grow and not just keep growing that way <laughs> we'll see just another look at the hellebores and the winter heath and by the way these are the blue star calamaris I cut those back earlier for the season and the way I cut them back as you can see is I leave about I'd say about six inches of stems and then they eventually dry but then I know where they are and I'll just tidy those up in the winter time. It kind of helps protect it a little bit when the leaves fall in it. It just uh, protects the crown a little bit more than just cutting it all back down to the ground. I really don't like doing that with any of my perennials. I don't like cutting them all the way back to the ground. So I also wanted to point out this lantern. I had some jar lanterns that I had originally bought at Home Depot and they eventually stopped working after, oh my goodness, about seven years. Then I bought some replacement ones on Amazon that stunk. 
And then I realized, well, what I need is I need a lantern that literally screws on so that rain will not get in it. And as you can see, that's what this one does. It's solar and it has such a beautiful glow at night. So I'll put a link in the description if you're interested. They're not that expensive at all. I bought uh, two, they come in two packs or a four pack, and I think the four pack was back ordered. Makes no sense to me, so I ordered two two packs. <laughs> but anyway, it's a beautiful lantern. It puts on a really, really pretty, colorful little light at night. Just a nice accent for the garden. <laughs>